Hey guys, welcome to the Outcheaping YouTube channel. My name is Austin, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing driveline angles as well as fixing the driveline angle on this 99 Cherokee with a slip yoke eliminator kit provided by Rough Country. So let's get started. Alright, so let's first talk about driveline geometry because it's often misunderstood for whichever uh, application you have. Um, this is an article by Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts and I found it on the Quadratech website. I'm going to post a link in the description below on where you can find it. But this article basically explains the whole thing. I'm not going to go too in depth with it, but I'm going to explain some key points on here that are pretty important, especially when you're lifting your Jeep. So first I'm going to start off with how a U-joint works and uh, basically what this article explains is that when you're rotating your U-joint one revolution, it's accelerating twice and it's decelerating twice. So as you can see, this ellipse right here, it basically shows um, the velocity of your drive shaft as it makes a full rotation. So on most vehicles that have a slip yoke style from the factory, you have two U-joints doing this and uh, basically they're offset from each other. So as a U-joint is going through a deceleration, the other U-joint on the opposite end of the drive shaft is actually accelerating at the same exact time. And this transfers to a smooth ride as you're going down the road and you won't have any driveline vibrations. So right here we have a nice diagram showing a slip yoke style um, working how it should. And basically when people say equal opposite angles, this is what it means. So if you take a straight line coming straight out of the yoke from the transfer case and take a line straight out of the yoke of the differential, you want these lines to be parallel to each other. So that means these angles in this U-joint and this U-joint are going to be exactly the same. And since they are opposite angles, they cancel out each other like I was explaining earlier with the uh, deceleration and acceleration twice per revolution in, in each U-joint. So if you lift your Jeep and now you're experiencing driveline vibrations, um, it could be from a few things. And one, it could be that the uh, lines over here are not parallel anymore, so that way there's different angles in each U-joint and they're not canceling out each other, leading to this uh, constant deceleration and acceleration in either of your U-joints causing that vibration. And obviously this could be corrected by changing your pinion angle, so that way you get the same angle coming out over here on the transfer case side. Another way that you could still get some driveline vibrations is even if you have these two lines parallel, you still could be going at a max angle. So uh, most manufacturers, they recommend a maximum of seven degrees out of your U-joint. So if you go anything past that, you might experience uh, slight vibrations, um, especially around 45, 55 miles an hour. If you go any more, it's gonna get even worse. So as you can see with this diagram right here with a slip yoke eliminator, uh, what they got up here instead of a slip yoke is actually a double card and CV joint and what this does is when you have that uh, constant acceleration deceleration in the U joint you got another one corresponding right here so it cancels out each other all in uh, this point right here so that way you get a smooth rotation going down your drive shaft into your axle now there is another U joint over here you don't want any degree variation in here you want to get this as straight as possible so you want your axle yoke to be pointed basically directly at your transfer case to get the ideal drive shaft angle in this setup. Now there is a little variance you can do with this one U-joint. You can go up to a three degrees or so, but you really want to keep it as straight as possible. Um, if you go anything more than three, you might still encounter a drive shaft vibration. Another fact that I found in this article um, that's pretty interesting is that say if you have three degrees in your U-joint over here and if that's running at 3000 RPM you're going to get 5000 hours out of that U-joint and uh, if you increase the angle say you go to six you're going to cut that life in half so you're only going to get 2500 hours out of that U-joint before it's going to start to fail. So one thing to keep in mind if you push the 15 degree limit in either of your U-joints that's when you're going to notice a driveline vibration and there's really nothing you can do to correct that unless you correct the angle of which the U-joint is at. And then another fact is, is you absolutely do not want to go over 30 degrees in a U-joint. This is pretty much set up for failure at this point. You're going to see it's immediate and catastrophic failure. So you're either going to fail and break U-joints, you're going to ruin your axle uh, bearings and seals and everything like that, or just break a drive shaft all in one. Um, so you definitely do not want to go over 30 degrees in any of your U-joints. 
And so lastly, the real benefit to a CV or double carbon drive shaft is that you have a smoother operation at higher operating angles and you extend the life of your U-joints. So it's so when you lift your Jeep up, you're not gonna have uh, any crazy severe angles going on in your U-joints. So that way things can last a lot longer. It's a better setup for having a lifted Jeep, no matter if you go on three inches or eight inches of lift. All right, so now that we got a basic understanding of a slip yoke drive shaft as well as a double carbon drive shaft, let's explain what's going on with my 99 Jeep Cherokee. So as you guys saw from my last videos, I recently installed a three inch suspension lift kit on this Jeep. And some people can get away with not having to do anything to your driveline angle depending on the drivetrain you have in your vehicle. Unfortunately on mine, once I installed the three inch lift, I had uh, severe rear drive shaft vibrations. Now even though I'm not going anything crazy in height, I'm only going three inches, I still do have that vibration and a lot of people recommend actually doing a transfer case drop. And what a transfer case drop does is obviously it drops down the transfer case a little bit and helps correct that angle coming out of the tail housing so that way it's not as severe in your u-joints and that way you get less vibration. Now for me I've had transfer case drops in the past and I'm not really a big fan of them. The reason being is because once you drop that transfer case it actually makes a worse angle for your front drive shaft and uh, what I found out over time if you have a transfer case drop on your vehicle for at least a year or two you'll start to notice that joints in the front drive shaft are going to start wearing out a lot faster and particularly the uh, slip joint in that double carbon front drive shaft likes to wear out and if you go underneath and you have some sort of front drive shaft vibration and you kind of wiggle around the shaft you can see some play in that slip joint. So I want to keep away from doing that even though it is a nice cheap fix to do I want to do it right and do a double carbon drive shaft in the rear and then from there I'm going to dial in all my drive line angles in the rear to get it all nice and correct. I might have to go back and add some axle shims in the rear axle so that way it gets the proper uh, pinion angle so that way that points at the transfer case. So today what we're going to be doing is installing a slip yoke eliminator kit in my NP231 transfer case. Now this kit was provided by Rough Country and I'll post a link in the description below on where you can get it. So let's take a quick look and see what we're working with. Alright so all this stuff right here is all the basic stuff that we need to do this slip yoke eliminator install and in the Rough Country kit it comes with a new tail housing that's going to go onto the back of the transfer case. We got a new shaft right here that's going to accept our new yoke. So basically we get rid of the slip yoke on there and then we install it with this new 1310 yoke over here. And then along with that they did come with some new uh, retaining rings as well as some seals for the yoke and then we got a new speedo gear and a nut lastly for the yoke bolting onto the shaft. Now since we're going to be ripping apart the transfer case you're going to want to get yourself some new fluid. Um, this NP231 takes ATF uh, automatic transmission fluid over here. Um, as well as get yourself some uh, new sealants since we're going to be unbolting the uh, two halves of the transfer case. We're going to have to seal that up as well as sealing up this new housing over here. And one thing I went out and bought is actually a new pair of retaining clip pliers. And these are actually some high quality made in Germany. Uh, I think it's Nepex. I'll post a link in the description below on where you can find these. Um, but I think they're only about 36 bucks. But it's definitely worth it because I've always had those uh, cheap uh, snap ring pliers that you know they're adjustable you can put different ends in them they're just kind of junk they don't open up the snap rings as wide as they do because they just bend and they're not really suitable for these uh, big snap rings on here but one thing I will note is that these retaining rings they don't have the little ends on there so it's not a true snap ring they're more referred to as just retaining rings so that's why these ends on here are kind of flat so that way you can get in there and expand it Pretty much all the snap rings on this install are going to be external snap rings. So we should be all set for using this tool on all those joints. Now one thing I'm probably going to do before we install this is actually just paint this yoke. Since this is an uh, external part that's exposed, um, it's all steel and it's uh, not painted at all. So I'm just going to uh, tape up this end over here. So that way uh, it doesn't get any paint on the uh, ceiling surface as well as the teeth inside here that engage into our shaft. So that way it keeps clean on those contact surfaces. That way we can get it painted and it won't rust when it's all on there. And so once again, um, like I said earlier in the video, I'm actually going to be doing this install while the transfer case is still in the vehicle. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier since I'm only uh, one person and it's hard to remove a uh, transfer case uh, when you're all alone. Um, so if you have two people, you can remove the transfer case. I got a video on doing that, removing it from the vehicle and then doing the uh, slip yoke install. But today we're just going to be doing it while it's in the vehicle and it's uh, not too hard to do once you're all in there. And one last thing is that 
Uh, you might be asking what drive shaft I'm going to be using for the rear. And with these uh, Jeep Cherokees that have the 4.0 automatic transmission and NP231 transfer case, you can use the front double card and drive shaft onto the rear. So in the meantime, that's what I'm going to be doing, just transferring the front drive shaft onto the rear um, until I get a custom drive shaft built for the rear uh, by measuring the lengths and then I can set it into uh, whatever company I want to uh, make the drive shaft for me. But in the meantime, it'll just be two wheel drive, but that's fine. So let's get started. I'm going to paint this uh, yoke over here and then we'll drain the fluid out of the transfer case. All right, so now that we're under the vehicle here, obviously right here is the back of our transfer case. Now up here we have our fill hole and down here we have our drain hole. Unfortunately, I don't have the correct internal hex socket to uh, fit this but I do have a T55 and it manages to fit in here. I've already cracked these both free first. Um, normally you want to crack open the fill um, before you do the uh, drain one, um, just in case uh, these were to uh, round out and you end up uh, draining it out and not being able to fill it. Uh, but now I'm just going to uh, drain this over here and we'll get all the uh, old fluid out. Make sure you have a pan underneath to catch all the fluid. There should be about a quart and a half of ATF in here, and this color doesn't look too bad. I changed this fluid in here about 20,000 miles ago or so. So I'm going to let that drain for a little bit. In the meantime, we'll start by taking off the front and rear drive shafts. Alright, so I'm going to start over here on the rear drive shaft where it connects to the axle yoke over here. We just have four 5 16 bolts going into this yoke, and then our strap should come free. Um, one thing I did is I put the transmission in neutral and chalked the tires so that way there's no tension on this drive shaft keeping this in park. So as you can see, there's a little bit of play so we should be able to get this out. Okay, so with those straps off it is still kind of tight in there so I'm just going to take a little hammer and uh, just pound on the back of the yoke of the drive shaft. Um, this way so that way it kind of breaks that bond free There we go, okay, so now over here on the slip yoke side We just have to get this boot off and that's held in by this metal retaining clip over here So I'm just going to take a screwdriver bend it off and then we should be able to pop out this drive shaft And then we just pull back Then there's another metal clip over here holding on the rest of the boot. We'll do the same thing. All right, so with that off, let's go do the same thing and remove the front drive shaft. All right, so now lastly, we got this uh, joint up here at the transfer case. Um, since this is a double card and shaft, we just have four bolts going into it once again. And since the transfer case is in two wheel drive and transmission is in neutral, as you can see, it's free spinning. So if we can't break it free because it's spinning, we can just uh, put it in drive and lock this in four high and then it should lock it. Um, so that way we can break this free. All right, and now our front drive shaft is free. All right, so now that we got both the front and rear drive shafts out, the next thing we have to do is take off this tail housing. And the uh, thing that's holding this on is not only do we have four bolts on it, then we just got this little steel dust cover over here on the shaft that kind of protects the seal. This is kind of pressed onto the shaft. So what I'm gonna do is heat this up around here Hopefully it's going to expand this dust shield and then I should be able to get behind it and then start pounding it off with a chisel and a hammer. All 
All right. And then we got our dust cover off. Now the next thing we have to do is actually remove the seal over here that's on the tail housing of the transfer case. Um, so when we remove this, this will give us access to a snap ring that's inside of there that we have to remove. Uh, that basically just kind of locks the shaft into the tail housing. Now you can use a seal puller and try to get in here. Unfortunately, I don't have one with me today, so I'm just going to have to pound this out with a chisel and a hammer. They also do, they got this uh, extra washer that's on here, so we can remove that as well. got our old seal remove that and now we just got this retaining ring inside of here good thing we got that new pair of pliers it should make it come out a little bit easier all right so looking in here now we actually got two snap rings we need to remove um, you'll see that there are just retaining rings that are on the main shaft here and what's kind of unusual I haven't seen before um, they actually have two of them one in this groove here and then one further over there that's held in against the bearing um, so we're actually going to have to remove both of them which shouldn't be too bad um, there is another snap ring that goes around the circumference in here that holds the bearing inside the tail housing. We don't have to remove that. We just need to take off these two retaining rings that are up here on the shaft. So I got my safety glasses on in case these uh, snap rings go flying. Um, so we'll try and get these off. Oh, that works so much better than those cheap snap ring pliers. All right, that's one of them. And this other one is a little bit further down in here. So we'll just have to get in here on an angle. Oh, so much easier. All right, so with those two rings out, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove our speedo sensor over here and just pay attention to the way that it's uh, clocked in there. So as you can see, we have the sensor kind of flat to the uh, face of the transfer case over here um, because these do go in uh, certain positions. Um, that way they mesh properly with the speedo gear that's on the shaft over here. And uh, the way it locks in is we got this little fork over here, so this kind of retains it into place. We're gonna remove that with a 13 millimeter uh, socket over here on this one nut, and then we should be able to pop out our sensor. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is remove our electrical connector over here. So we just got our little red safety clip. I'm just going to pop out of place, and then squeeze down and remove it. And then our little locking fork comes out, Hang on to that because we're going to reuse that. And then you might notice that your uh, sensor might be kind of frozen in there because there's an O-ring that kind of seals it and it might kind of get stiff over time. So we're going to gently pry around it, try not to break it. And then see if we can get this out. And there it goes, half of it at least. The other uh, speedo gear is still inside. That just slides into the sensor. Oop. So now that we got that speedo sensor out, the next thing we gotta do is actually unbolt the tail housing from the rest of the transfer case. And it's held in by four 10 millimeter bolts, two of them on the bottom, one's up here and one's up here. I lied, there's actually five 10 millimeter bolts holding this in. I just couldn't see it where I was at. So there's one more up here on the top. All right, so now that all of our bolts are out for the tail housing, we should be able to remove it. The only thing that's really keeping it in place right now is the old RTV that's kind of uh, sealed up against this uh, other half of the transfer case. So they do have a few pry points that you can actually stick something in there. Um, I'm gonna go right here. I believe there's another uh, actual little gap yeah, back here that you can fit a screwdriver in. Obviously I can't do that since this is still in the vehicle, so I'm gonna hope for the best and try prying over here on these uh, little ears that stick out. There might be fluid coming out, so make sure you have something to catch it. But now our tail housing is free and let's pull it off. All right, so now with that tail housing off, we can go ahead and split the case on this. Um, we don't have any more retaining rings holding uh, this shaft in. Basically, when we take off this back half of the case, our oil pump system is gonna come with it. So this is our oil pump right here. And from the backside, they have a tube going all the way over here to where the oil pickup is. So 
When we remove this, it's all gonna come off as one piece. Now the bolts holding these halves together, they're gonna be a 15 millimeter. Um, I believe there's a total of eight bolts, and then up here on the top, there's actually a 12.10 millimeter bolt. So we'll have to uh, get a socket for that as well. I'll zip these off with the impact, and then we'll go and break the seal surface. Alright, so I finally got that top bolt free. As you can see, it's a nice long 10 millimeter 12 point socket. Unfortunately, with all the socket sets I have, I don't have any uh, 12 point sockets, especially a 10 millimeter. So what I ended up doing was just using a ratchet wrench that had a 12 point end on it. So I was able to fit the wrench in there and just kind of work it off. It took 10 minutes, but I eventually got it out. I might be uh, replacing this bolt, so that way I don't have to deal with it putting it in, or I'll just put it over here on the bottom. The amount of threads isn't really significant on this because as you can see about an inch or so sticks out on the back side. But now I'm going to work on splitting the case. There is a few pry points um, going around this where you can stick a screwdriver in, kind of hammer it in and it should break the seal. Um, one of them is over here I saw but I won't be able to get at it really with this uh, catalytic converter in the way but I think there's another one on the other side. So we'll try uh, breaking the surface free and then this whole case half should come free. Once again, make sure I have something because there's probably going to be some fluid coming out of here. So make sure I have something to catch that. All right, so I got it half free. As you can see, the oil pump wants to move on us. Um, we might be able to remove it by just undoing that line. Oh, there it goes. So as you can see, the oil pickup tube is right down in here. And that just disconnected with our oil pump. Keep in mind there is an o-ring on it. Um, this one doesn't have it because it actually came off inside the oil pump. So just make sure you have that. Um, that way we can reinstall it without any uh, vacuum leaks. All right. Now we can remove this from the vehicle. All right, so one last thing we got to do before we remove our shafts that are in the transfer case is remove this front drive shaft yoke. And the nut that's on here is going to be an inch and an eighth. So uh, we'll zip that off with the impact and then we should be able to take off the shaft. There goes that. That's our nut right there. And then we should be able to slide off our yoke. Just like that. All right, so now looking at the other end, there is a little magnetic washer that usually lies right in here. That already fell out when I was impacting that yoke off, but basically that catches all of your metal shavings that are in here. Um, so you wanna remove that and clean it up, um, so that way it's nice and clean when you reinstall it. But I'm gonna take off this little coil spring that's on the shift fork, and now we're gonna pull out the two shafts and chain all in one piece. So you wanna get a hand on each of them and then set it down on something that's relatively clean. All right, so that's pretty much it for on removing stuff. Um, all this other stuff in here, you can uh, take it apart, just kind of look it over, but everything for me seems like it's doing pretty well. Um, everything does go back in one way, so you really can't mess it up, except for the shifting gear right here. It is possible you can put this in backwards and you won't be able to actually shift into four wheel drive, it'll just stay into uh, two wheel drive. Ask me how I know on my friend's Jeep. But now with those shafts removed, we'll go over to the workbench because we still have to take off some gears that are on our old shaft and then transfer them over to our new shaft and then we can start reassembly. All right, so we got both of our shafts and chain up here on the workbench. Um, basically, we're gonna be replacing our old slip yoke shaft with this new one that's provided in the kit. And one thing we need to do is swap these gears onto the shaft over here. And basically, these are just kind of held on there with a uh, clip that's over here on the back. So I'm gonna take this off of its chain and now on the back side, we just got another retaining ring, so we'll take that off. There we go. Slide that off. And now our gear should come off. And then slide this piece off as well. And that's pretty much it for this shaft. 
and go and discard this. And now we can reassemble it onto this new shaft. I'm just going to take a little bit of ATF and kind of lube up this surface on here since it spins and I don't want it to go in dry. And then just reassemble it the way it came off. And now we'll take a new retaining ring that's provided in the kit. It's going to be the bigger one and we'll snap this back into place. All right, that snapped on there. This guy should move nice and freely and this guy should be locked onto the shaft. All right, so that's pretty much it for the internals. We're basically ready to reassemble all this stuff back into the transfer case. Uh, but first I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning. I got some brake clean. I'm gonna clean out pretty much everything I can. Um, I'm gonna clean out the uh, case cover as well as clean off all the old gasket surfaces. And then while I'm at it, I'm gonna take off this old little uh, thread seal over here um, that was on the front drive shaft yoke and there's a new little star seal that's going to go over this so that way it just keeps any fluid uh, inside the case and doesn't leak through the threads then we got our new one i'll just slide that over one thing i did notice in the rough country uh, kit is they actually provided an extra larger snap ring over here in case you somehow mess up the uh, new one by putting it in they did come with an extra and then the other two snap rings there are these two little guys. These are what we're gonna use later. Once we get this all installed, we'll have to uh, snap that on there when we install our new Speedo gear. One other thing we can do on the workbench to make it a little bit easier is we got this a little aluminum plug that goes right here on the new tail housing. So we can thread that into place and just snug that up. And the size on this should be an 18 millimeter. Nothing crazy tight, but just enough to set that O-ring so it seals nicely. All right, so I went and cleaned off all the uh, gasket surfaces, both on uh, this side of the transfer case, as well as the cover that we took off and the outside portion where our tail housing attaches to. So now we're ready to install both of our shafts um, with the chain. So we're gonna lift it up into here and kind of line up everything. So we got our shifter fork. We're just gonna have to work around, kind of lift it up as we slide this in. I went ahead already and put a little bit of ATF on the shaft that we're gonna be installing over here, our new shaft. So that way the uh, spines of the shaft aren't dry when we reinstall this. So I'll lift up on the shift fork, kind of wiggle it all around, and there we go, that's installed. So now the next thing we gotta do is put our other case half on here. We wanna make sure not to forget our coil spring that goes on this uh, shift fork over here, as well as our magnet that goes in here on the bottom. And then we also have our oil pump. So we're gonna be all assembling that at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna put some RTV on the cover side and then we'll get back and reinstall all this. All right, so I got some RTV on this side of the transfer case. I figure it might be a little bit easier when installing this cover. I got our coil spring in there. I got our magnet in there. And now I got our cover over here. It's all cleaned off. I got the oil pump assembly with the pickup tube and filter all installed in here. So we're just going to install this all in one shot. Just gotta mesh up the uh, oil pump with the uh, here in the shaft. Line up our shift fork with the hole over here on the outside of the case. And then take the uh, front stub shaft that comes out where the front drive shaft is, kind of wiggle that around so that way it sets in the bearing over here on the other side of the case. And there we go. I think that's all the way in. So I'm gonna start threading some bolts in all the way around. Um, just make sure that your pickup over here for the uh, oil pump is still seated in all the way. If it's not, you can take something to stick in there, kind of push it up and make sure it's in that oil pump. Otherwise, you're gonna be having problems in the near future. All right, so when reinstalling these bolts, we do have a couple bolts that are a little bit longer, and those are gonna go to the bottom right corner over here, and then the top left over here. They're the ones that have the washers on them. 
And then I also found another bolt to replace that 10 millimeter 12 point bolt that's up here. Um, it's just a normal 716 C1C bolt. So now we can begin tightening this up. I'm just gonna tighten it up in a crisscross pattern. And nothing crazy tight on these, since we are threaded into aluminum, don't want to strip these out. Alright, so I double checked my oil pickup and just took something uh, thin in between this gap here and kind of pushed up so that way the pickup tube is seated inside the oil pump. So that's all ready to go. And pretty much now it's all downhill. That was pretty much the hardest part. Um, so the next thing we got to do is install our speedo gear onto our new shaft and to do that we got to install one snap ring on the uh, furthest back groove over here then install our gear and then another snap ring to hold it in place so it doesn't pop out this way so once again we'll use our retaining pliers open it up and push it back there's one and then we'll take our new speedo gear provided in the kit doesn't matter which way you put it on because it's both the same so we'll slip that over and then we got our last little retaining ring that's going to go over here to keep it in place. And there we go. That's all nice on there. All right, so now we're ready to put on our tail shaft housing. Um, so I'm just going to once again just clean off the surface since it is a little bit oily. Um, I already went here with a brass wire wheel and clean that up. Then I'll apply some gasket maker to the tail housing. And I'll slide this over and bolt it on. All right, so I got some gasket over here on our new tail housing, and we're just going to install this the same way the other one was. So we have the speedo sensor up and to the left. Carefully slide this over the shaft. Then line up our shift fork pin to where it is on the uh, tail housing. Might have to move the shaft around since we're doing this in the vehicle. Gravity likes to pull it down. There we go. I'll start threading in our bolts. And now we can snug up these bolts in a crisscross pattern like we did before. All right, so for installing our new yoke, we got our rubber sealing washer right here. That's going to be the larger one. So we can set that in there. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of ATF, put it around these splines here, and then hopefully it gets a little bit on that new seal so that way nothing goes in dry. And then we got our new yoke that we just painted up. Slide that in. And then we got our new inch and an eighth nut that we can thread on. Then we can go and tighten this guy up. And now for our speedo gear, we're just gonna install it the same way it came out. So. So if you remember how it was orientated, it was orientated like this with a connector towards the backside, towards a transfer case. So I'm going to feed it through the hole. I went and put some ATF on the gear as well as the O-ring surface. So I'm just going to have it loosely on there. Then I'm going to take our locking fork and the bolt and then line it up onto the groove on where the speedo is. Once that's the position, I can go and push on the speedo. Pops it in like that. And now all we have to do is just finish tightening up this 13 millimeter bolt. All right, so once that's snugged up, we can take our plug in, which I put back here, plug it back into place, then snap up the safety clip. That's all ready to go. All right, so now we only have a few things left to do. One is we got to uh, fill this up with fluid, but I'm gonna let the uh, RTV cure for a little bit longer. We still have to put the front yoke in for the front drive shaft. We can bolt up our rear drive shaft over here, which I'm using the front drive shaft for. So I won't be reinstalling a front drive shaft today um, until I get a custom drive shaft made for the rear over here. All right, so I went and just installed that front yoke. Uh, nothing special to it, but I put a little bit ATF on the uh, ceiling surface and tightened it up. Now I'm ready to install the rear shaft here, which is our front shaft. So I'm going to start over here on the transfer case side. Make sure it goes on in all the way, and then I'm going to start threading in our bolts. Get all of them in first, and then we'll tighten them down.
All right, so if you can't get those tight to where you want to, you can always throw the Jeep into park, and that way I'll lock up the shaft, and then that way you should be able to tighten this up a lot easier. Now we just gotta attach it over by the axle. So normally I'd like to put a little blue Loctite on those uh, U-joint bolts, um, but since this isn't really a temporary solution, I might have it for a few weeks until I get a new custom drive shaft built. Um, I just went and uh, skipped that step, but uh, you definitely want to add some blue Loctite on there. Um, that way these don't back out and you don't have any uh, drive shafts falling off on you. Now the last thing I'm going to do to this drive shaft is put some grease in the slip joint right here. So there's a little Zerk fitting and I'm just going to pump it full of grease till I see it coming out either the seal over here or over here where there's a little weep hole. All right, now the last thing we got to do is fill this up with ATF. I got the uh, drain plug all in there. I went and put some Teflon tape on there so that way it can't leak. Now we're gonna fill it up through the fill plug until we start uh, seeing fluid come out. That way we know we have enough in there. So if you have a pump, this might be a little bit easier, but if you don't, you can just take uh, some diff fluid uh, nozzle and it threads onto here nicely. So we got fluid coming out, take our fill plug, start threading it in. And then I did go out and get an internal hex and this is actually a 10 millimeter. Take the excess of that off and that's pretty much it. That is all it is for the install. All right guys, so that is gonna be a wrap for today's video. Um, my pinion angle isn't ideal right now. It still does have a few degrees in variance, so it's not directly pointing up at the transfer case, so the uh, drive shaft isn't necessarily parallel with the uh, yoke out of the differential. Um, but I think I might be able to get away with it. But if that angle is still severe, you guys will see a video in the future where I'm gonna go in and swap out the axle shims, so that way I get a proper pinion angle on my axle, and that way there's no vibrations at all. Now when I installed this lift kit, I used uh, Rough Country's 3 inch full leaf packs and they actually did have an axle shim in there. Not quite sure what that is, but we'll have to figure that out in the future if we do have problems. But overall, it wasn't too bad. Um, you can definitely do this with one person. It's a little bit faster by keeping the transfer case in the vehicle. It's just a little bit harder because you have to work above your head and it's in tight areas. But other than that, I'm going to leave links below on where you can find a slip yoke eliminator kit by Rough Country for your Jeep as well as the pliers I use for the ring retainers, and then also that article that I talked about earlier in the video. So if you guys have any questions or comments that the video doesn't cover, make sure to post them below and I'll be happy to answer. And if you guys want to get yourself some outjeeping decals, I got an Etsy store where I got J10 as well as XJ outjeeping decals you guys can purchase. I'll post a link in the description below and hopefully you guys can help out the channel. So make sure to like and subscribe for some more how-tos and we'll see you guys in the next video.